you know, and if you think about it really, it's kind of gross that we like the barnyard smell. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish and welcome to my fiber family. How are you guys doing? COVID is causing yet another transition in my life, but here we are. We're gonna unbox my lockdown haul, I guess you would call it, or I'm gonna show you some of it. Some of it's unboxed already, like obviously. But this is everything I bought for fiber during lockdown I think I went through my PayPal <laughs> to make sure I got it all because it goes back 10 weeks and honestly I can't remember you guys I think it was earlier this week Empire Acres and I'm sorry I don't know your real name but she commented and said that she likes watching the weaving even though she doesn't really understand what I'm doing while I'm like warping and weaving and all that stuff and it made me think about it how many of you actually watch and don't do any of this stuff I'm just curious because I watch people who pour acrylics I watch people who do like silk screen printing from like chalk couture like my favorite is Gina from the shabby Creek cottage oh my god she goes live on Facebook like every single I think every day or maybe just five days a week whatever a bunch and makes all these adorable projects and I was watching her today and she was like <laughs> I'm a hot mess but try to make pretty things. And I'm telling you, I felt it in my soul. Gina, you'll probably never see this, but I felt that in my soul. So anyways, if you want to find her, she's not hard to find. You just have to look at for Shabby Creek Cottage on Facebook and she'll pop right up and you just like her page and then her live feeds will come up for you. I love to watch people do crafts and art and both. Um, and I'll tell you why I think that is. I think it's because deep down I'm like a small child and I see that there is magic in it. Like they take a couple bottles of paint and a canvas and they make like something beautiful or like in her case she uses chalk paste or it's, it's the same with wool. Like you take a stinky gross fleece. I mean some people would think it's gross I like that smell but you know and if you think about it really it's kind of gross that we like the barnyard smell <laughs> but I embrace it you take this gross thing you wash it maybe you dye it maybe you comb it cart it you do whatever you're gonna do you make it into beautiful yarn then you make it into a beautiful thing that someone can wear or hang on their wall or use on their bed or whatever and that's kind of magical I bought some magical tools of the trade, if you will. Let's go through them. I don't know what order they were, so I'm not even gonna bother trying to go through them in order. There is one thing that's not included in this, and I feel a little bit like I have to address this. A couple months ago, you guys may or may not have watched me unbox a knit crate box, and I really liked the yarn in the first box. What happened was they accepted me as an affiliate and like that's not a hard thing to do. You basically just apply and then they say yes. Uh, John bought me three months and I was gonna unbox it on my channel and try it out. I unboxed the first one and I liked it. And then I unboxed the second one and I didn't film it. And I can't remember why, but I didn't film it and I was like not wowed. I haven't been wowed with the patterns or like everything that's else that's put in yet. And in this one, even the yarn did not wow me. In the one that I just unboxed in May, which was the last of the three months, it was literally two blank skeins of yarn and two packets of Kool-Aid. And I, I feel like that's addressing a different group. Of knitters which by the way not to throw shade at any group of knitters like everyone's on a different part of their journey and everyone likes to do different things and everyone feels different things and all the all that but to me it felt like it has been really just phoned in and the pattern so far there has not been one where I was like ooh and 
again that's more of a taste thing it's not a like these aren't good patterns but it's totally not my taste and so uh i just guess i need to put it out there to you guys because i did mention that i was an affiliate when i unboxed the first box and i'm actually not gonna get it again and uh maybe i'll take the link off that because in my opinion i wouldn't buy it i'm not gonna buy it again and so I don't want to tell you, hey, like, try this out. It's great. That's not how I feel. There is other stuff here that's going to be really fun. You also know, well, maybe you don't know, I did not work for 10 weeks because of the lockdown. I do transcription from home. I type between 90 and 110 words per minute, depending on the content and who's talking and how good the audio is and all that kind of stuff. And I work for a service and there really was not very much work available. So I was faced with the decision of like, am I going to continue to just like get in there and slog and fight it out for work or am I going to just leave it? for the people who are literally feeding their families with this work and that's what I decided to do. It's kind of a hard decision you guys because I could lose my spot. I've been doing it for like five years and I love it. So I didn't get a paycheck for 10 weeks and I tried to be really really smart about my purchases. I'm always kind of cheap because it's always like I'm trading hours of my life for this fun thing. So I always think about it in those um, terms. And then I'm also very fiscally responsible in general. If I bought it, you know it's a good deal because I love a good deal. I know this is chronological actually. So the first thing I bought was a pound of so undyed sari silk. So this is like waste basically and I got it from Tenny's Fiber Farm. Three of these things are from Tenny's. And I'm going to show you. This is how it comes and it's marked Sorry Silk Fluff 1 pound and it's all undyed. Let's make sure it goes in focus and it's so soft. I need to dye some because this is one of my most favorite things. It's all floating around me right now. I don't I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but it's one of my most favorite things to dye and then make a tweed yarn out of because it doesn't it it's so bright when you dye it that the tweed colors really pop, but it's so soft that it just like melts into your yarn it doesn't make any like bumps or lumps or anything like that and so this is literally one of my most favorite things for tweed but it's merino bamboo and i actually bought two pounds of it um and again when you add these two together they take the dye differently so you get really cool and interesting effects when you dye this and i again bought this from tenny's was just one of the specials that she posted and I was like, I'll take two pounds of that. There's one more thing I bought from Tenny's, so I'm just going to go ahead and show you even though it was like way back um, in like mid-March. She has these deals sometimes where she does like what I would consider more meat breeds, but I do like to spin them. They're down breeds and they're like blends of a whole bunch of them and from a whole bunch of like from a whole farm. She calls it J Jumbo Jimmy in this case, but it's like a what you would consider like a farm roving kind of thing. And I ordered three pounds because I just kind of wanted to just try it out. This was actually, this was around my birthday in April. I didn't film, I'm, we kind of missed my birthday because I lost all that footage. It doesn't matter. My birthday just sort of sucked this year and it was like, it didn't happen. Other than John buying me a gift certificate to RH Lindsay, which by the way was amazing, it's kind of like my birthday didn't happen. So it is, again, like a little more of a downbreed kind of wool. And it's got a little more kind of ecru to it, but look how floofy it is. And I think I might try it for socks. It's got a little bit of VM in it. You guys, I don't understand people who get upset about that. Sheep live outside. Oh, gosh, it smells really good, like woolly. 
And it but it's gonna be so many hours of fun, right? Okay, so next, these are even more hours of fun. And the first thing I'm gonna open is one thing. I bought this fleece last year. It's from Jennifer Smith. She has a farm with, gosh, I think they're BFL Border Lester crosses. Where is my knife? because last year it was gorgeous. And I'm actually gonna dye some of last year's, probably this week or this weekend, so you get to see it soon. And she does a beautiful job. I have to say, she probably does the most beautiful job of any fleece that I've ever bought, I think, of the way that she like presents it. I love that. So you get it in this super nice tissue and aqua. Hello, we know I love it. And look at this. Isn't that pretty? I got like effort. I love it. So it's got my name on it. Patricia is my full real name. I know I always go by Trish, but my dad's name is Patrick. So it's like confusing. She sends, oh, she sends a little note about Basking Meadow Farms. That is the farm. And it's in Maryland. So she has sheep and goats, and oh, she'll eight sheep and two goats. It is a border Lester, blue face Lester cross, and this is daffodil. I have to say that I am thoroughly thrilled and pleased with the quality of her fleeces, but I'm about to show you a lock of it, and then you'll know what I'm talking about. First of all, Look how clean that is. Did this sheep even live outside? Can we just take a moment to appreciate that? This must be five and a half to six inches long. Look at that. That is, and it's got a beautiful luster. It's gorgeous. Where am I gonna put this? Oh gosh, if you don't live in the United States, you might not know this, but we have a couple different kind of organized groups that teach kids how to go into agriculture. One of them is called the FFA and one of is one of them is called 4H. They're both big. There's I'm sure like thousands of smaller ones, but those are big nationwide ones. And in the United States, like everything's canceled for the summer. And that's where a lot of those kids it, if they raise an animal as part of their project for those organizations, they would take the animal to a fair. It's like a county fair or a state fair. I don't even know how to describe a fair if you don't, <laughs> you don't live in the United States, but um, they judge basically like the quality of the animals for breeding and all that kind of stuff. So you can win. And then you can sell your animal for whatever. So it might be for food, it might be for wool or whatever so those are all canceled so many many kids raised animals worked a whole year and now cannot show their animal and i bought the fleece of a kid in now i can't even remember south dakota who raised an animal for the fair and cannot take it to the fair right now. And I actually opened this a little earlier so I could give some to a friend of mine and I'm gonna give her more. It's a 17 pound merino fleece. It is beautiful. And believe me, I wrote her a note and I told her already. So it's a merino fleece and it has some VM in it. Look at this box. Hey. Okay. It has some VM in it, but I'm going to shift it back here. Here we go. It's, I'm going to say four inches probably. Between three and four inches. I don't have a tape measure right on me, but, and it's gorgeous and so squish and fine. And look at the crimp and it's humongous. 17 pounds of fleece. Like what? Okay. Last. There's a story here too. There was a lady, well first, I just carded the last of the Jacob lamb that I had in my stash. I always bought it from 
this farm in St. Joseph, Michigan. The owner's name is Peg Bostwick. And by the way, I really recommend those. You can just Google her if you want to find them. If you want a Jacob lamb or yearling fleece, they'll pick one out for you like by hand and they're unbelievable. She said, I'd like to put three fleeces in a box. I had no idea that it was gonna be a box this size, by the way. And I will send you a box for $30. Now, normally I have like a list of questions for someone who is new to the game. And really, if I'm buying a fleece online, I'll pretty much ask almost everybody the same questions. But I did not ask them. I literally was just like, okay, just fill a box. Let's see how it goes. And, I, and she said, please give me your feedback, which I have done as far as we are, but I haven't opened them yet. But like, I don't even know if this is skirted. I have no clue what's about to come out of this box. Did I say these were Jacob fleeces? I think I did. All right, so because I didn't ask for those questions, I'll be honest, I kind of just assumed that I would have to take these out and skirt them. So I'm gonna be a little bit careful taking locks out, but I am gonna show you what's in here. It'll be easier to skirt if I can just like take it out and keep it all in one like sheet. You know what? This is much better than I expected. There is VM in here. Look. Looks like there's some second cuts. Honestly, I can live with that. Jacob is a breed that I love to spin. I think they're considered a primitive breed, but maybe they fit in the down. I'm not exactly sure. It's a good, um, I probably should look it up. I have the fleece and fiber source book. Look at this. That is, quite a nice lock. I think that I actually lucked out. It wouldn't be the first time. Hopefully it won't be the last either. So I know some of you have had questions before on how to buy fleece online. I guess if you have specific questions, please do put them in the comments because I try to address them and I'm actually keeping a list to do a full, these are your questions, here are my answers. I still have one to wash and now I have all this. So thanks for joining me. You guys, I really didn't go that crazy during lockdown. I was my usual frugal self. I'm not saying that I mind paying for a really beautiful fleece. Like I wasn't as frugal with the one from Basking Meadows because I knew it was gonna be magical and amazing. I've bought from them before, but I do tend to, especially if it's sort of a crapshoot, I do tend to want a good deal. I hope you guys are all healthy and well. I hope like your communities are all healthy and well. I hope that this is inspiring for you. Lately there's been a lot of weaving content, but I am still spinning and knitting as well. So just hang around if you don't want to weave. One thing I need to say to you guys is how much I appreciate you. Honestly don't know how this lockdown would have been if I did not have the little Fiber Love Diary community because there have been times even with that I have felt really isolated and like I miss my friends. Having you guys has helped me get through all this and actually it's done some kind of bigger things for me during this lockdown. I just feel like, you know, we, bad things came from this, but also we all had the opportunity to try to take whatever good was there and let it like sink in and change us for the better. So. Um, I don't want to minimize the bad things that have happened and that people have had to go through. I mean, I can't even imagine the what a lot of people have been through in this. But I think even in the very worst, darkest times, there is like a, a good thing you can take from it. And even if the thing that you take from it is to appreciate every day that you have on this crazy earth. <laughs> and enjoy it and love the people that are around you, then that's actually a really big awesome thing. But I do want to tell you guys that I so appreciate you. You guys have the best energy and I love that you're always like getting inspired and making fun things and sending me pictures and it's just, it's been really great and I feel like you guys have helped me get through the lockdown. Thank you. I love you. I think you're awesome and I will see you soon. Bye.